Hello, BookTube. Oh, we're at the final shelf of this unpredictable penguin bookcase. This one penguin bookcase. It doesn't seem to be operating under any rhyme or reason. We're at the top shelf now. Actually, the very top of the bookcase is a, the, a big box set of the penguin little black classics. No need to go through all of those. It's a wonderful set. If you have the, the money to set aside for it, you're going to love reading through it. But in the meantime, let's look at the books themselves here from this. Oh, wow. Oh, this is the Royal Tyler translation of the Tale of the Hakey in a Penguin classic. Uh, when this came out originally, it, of course, wasn't a Penguin classic. And uh, it, was a, it was a big hit all over the review sphere. <laughs> Reviewers everywhere wanted to review it. Uh, and I got a chance to. I think for the national in Abu Dhabi, uh, but it, the, the, it was a mad scramble. This, this is the type of thing. This, this is a a big, great Japanese epic. The uh, the 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 typical description has been that this is the ancient Japanese Iliad to the the tale of Genji being the ancient Japanese Odyssey. A little, kinda, sorta, <laughs> in the sense that this is a big multi-person war drama, whereas Genji is more intimate and more. Uh, I don't want to say plot-driven, because there really isn't any plot, but uh, more personality-driven. Uh, this is just incredible. Just an amazing book. Uh, and when a thing like this comes along, an, an event like this comes along, I don't know if this is going to make any sense to people who aren't book reviewers, but when a, when a book like this comes along, you can have a, a literary blog or a literary website or something like that, a home journal, so to speak, that you can review anything you want at. I, it's a great boon. I've loved, I lo at the time I was the managing editor of Open Letters Monthly, the predecessor of Open Letters Review. And uh, that's great, because I got to review hundreds of books a year, and that's fantastic. But when a big event like this comes along, uh, you really want the biggest audience possible, and reviewers tend to scramble for that. <laughs> they all want to be in on the chorus, but uh, they don't necessarily want to do it on their blog. Uh, and I was, I was lucky enough to get a review of this. I'm pretty sure it was it was uh, international, but one way or another, this is uh, of course Royal Tyler does a fantastic job translating. Uh, it's just just an amazing work, just a, a an immersive, amazing work. I, I, I'm unbelievably violent, but uh, but immersive. <laughs> uh, what's next here? Oh, oh boy. Okay, this is the Penguin Classic. Uh, of another thing along the same lines. This is the Shah Nama. This is a, a Ferdowsi's The Book of Kings, uh, a great uh, ancient Persian epic that also took, uh, long before Tale of Heike, took the, the literary world by storm because this was a one of the first big un, unedited uh, English language translations, one of the most accessible ones. And this also is a gigantic panorama of violence. <laughs> yeah, this has... Blurbs by Reza Aslan, Khaled Hosseini, and Michael Durda of the Washington Post, uh, who writes, Thanks to Davis's magnificent translation, Ferdowsi and the Shah Nama live again in, the, in English. I, uh, I had a blast, just a blast, reading it. <laughs> uh, let's see, what's next here? Oh, I think we've mentioned this before. I think we've seen this before. This is the pillow book of Sayyid Shanagan, uh, which is a... Silly, silly book, <laughs> but written by an exact contemporary and a friend of the author of The Tale of Genji, which is not silly. Uh, this is... <laughs> it's a collection of whimsies and airhead chatter. <laughs> it's silly anecdotes that don't go anywhere, but that, it's, it's endlessly entertaining to read, mainly for that fact, because there are no stakes involved at all. It's... it's, it's the, the ladies at court will wake up and realize that it's snowing outside and they'll make lists of the top 10 things to do when you're stuck inside because it's snowing outside, stuff like that. And it just goes on and on like that from page after page. Utterly delightful. Uh, what's next here? Oh, so sicky. This is Kokoro. Uh, bizarre novel. This is a newish Penguin translation with a hideous cover. This is a, it's a bizarre novel of, of, uh, Heavily freighted friendship. <laughs> it's a, it's, I'm due for a reread. Uh, oh, the tale of Issei. Well, so, well, we're seeing we're seeing uh, some Japanese fiction here. Anyway, this is uh, one of the most famous and important works of Japanese literature, consisting of 125 poem tales, loosely based on the life of the hero Narihira, a model lover of the Heian period, same period that roughly the same period that Tale of Genji comes from. Uh, first, first uh, accessible English version of this that I know of. I don't, I don't think there were any others. This one has period illustrations all throughout as well. 
Uh, I don't know if I reviewed this. I love getting it, but I don't know if I did. Uh, what is this next one? Tenzin Shoyo, this is the life of the Buddha. Uh, which might sound like, you know, a, a fairly arid liturgical text, but it's actually very good reading. Uh, very, very entertaining reading. That was not what I expected. Uh, what's next here? Oh, okay, we shift continents. Uh, this is a Penguin classic of The River Between by Nikugi Wathiongo. Uh, I consider to be one of the greatest authors um, alive today. I hesitated for a minute because I'm not sure that he's still alive. I'm pretty sure that he is still alive, and all of his books are fantastic. If Penguin actually were to make them all, that would be fine by me. Uh, he's been also a perennial uh, uh, favorite for the Nobel Prize in literature, back when that meant something, back before they gave it to Dylan. Uh, I don't know if what, I don't know what the fate of the Nobel Prize in Literature is, uh, but one way or another, he, he was always on the shortlist, just a perennial favorite on the shortlist. Oh, okay, all right, this is another book by him, uh, Devil on the Cross. These are great village novels, just, just great uh, penetrating studies, just amazingly good. They're, they're not, I don't think uh, they work quite so well in the Western sensibility of what a dramatic novel is. Uh, the dramatic, the quote-unquote dramatic incidents in both those novels um are pretty heavy-handed and seem a little shoehorned in, but the books themselves, oh, <laughs> you can forgive them that because they're so good. Uh, okay, uh, this is a, a just a big book of of Islamic fact. This is by Shihab al Din al Nuwari. This is the ultimate ambition in the arts of erudition. <laughs> an astonishing record of the knowledge of a civilization. This book catalogs everything known to exist from the perspective of a 14th century Egyptian scholar, scholar and literature. More than 9,000 pages and 30 volumes, here abridged to one volume and translated in English for the first time, it contains entries on everything from medieval moon-worshipping cults, sexual aphrodisiacs, and the, uh, the substance of clouds, to how to get a smell of alcohol off one's breath and the deliciousness of cheese made from buffalo milk and the nesting habits of flamingos. Uh, and I read this when it first came to me. I have the pub sheet in here, so I'm, I will know. I will know when it first came to me. Uh, August of 2016. Uh, and I loved it, and, and it was a, a pure sign that the book is working, is that I wanted to read a lot more. I wished that it weren't so heavily abridged. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, my. Okay, this is not. this does not have a pub sheet. Uh, this is a, a Chinese novel, a relatively, the, the sort of laying the groundwork for contemporary Chinese fiction. This is the real story of Ah Q and other tales of China. This is a complete fiction of Lu Xun. Uh, and this is who lived from 1881 to 1936 and is one of the founding figures of modern Chinese literature. Uh, and this is tremendous. This is, even in an English translation, This, if I remember correctly, this English translation wasn't really... Uh, wasn't really the thing to make me forget the translator. I, I, if I remember correctly, I kept wondering throughout the translation, okay, did you just say that, or did the author say that? And if, if the author didn't say that, but you can't figure out a way to say what the author said, then maybe you shouldn't be translating the author's work. <laughs> but I hate it when I feel that way. Sometimes I do in a translation. And it looks like all of these are going to be translations. That's uh, Okay, this is, uh, this is Atar. This is the Conference of the Birds, more Islamic mysticism. All the birds of the world get together to talk. Uh, the Analects of Confucius doesn't get any more than that. Wow, this is so. This is translated with introduction by An Ping Chin, and this also came out in 2016. I think. I think. Uh, I think a Penguin editor sort of. Uh, there was a rush of uh, Chinese and Japanese literature. Okay, this is all folded wrong. Who did this? Who do I complain to? Oh, 2014. Okay, boy, I have been getting penguins for a long time. Uh, the Analects of Confucius. Absolute, absolute classic. Uh, <laughs> story of Hong Gildong. This is a, a Korean adventure story. This is, it's, it's a Korean superhero story, basically. It's uh, it's Monkey. It's the, it's the tale of the monkey, a, a variation of that for, for Korean literature. All sorts of, of high adventures meant to be taken with a laugh and a grain of salt. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, well, if I remember correctly, this novel uh, comes from, to us from around uh, the 1930s. This this is by uh, 
Mulk Raj Anand, and this is Untouchable. And it's an, it's a novel, kind of a novel expose, like, uh, The Jungle, uh, exposing the iniquities of the, of the untouchable rung of, of traditional Indian society. These people who do all the jobs nobody else wants, and they, they're hereditary. They, they, so you're, you're born into an untouchable family. And in, in the most traditional ways, I'm not sure that it happens now in India anymore, but, uh, for a long, long time, untouchables had to announce their presence on the street. They had to voluntarily keep themselves out of uh, religious ceremonies, restaurants, public gatherings of any kind. They had to. It wasn't just that society considered them the lowest rung, the doers of filthy jobs. It was also that they had to consider themselves that way. Uh, and this is a novel that goes right into the heart of that whole system. It's tremendously good reading. Uh, Oh, these next three are huge. What can they? Oh, you know what can they be? I bet I know what they are. Considering what all the rest of these have been. Yes, yes. Okay, fantastic. This is an epic Penguin production. This is the Malcolm Lyons translation of the Tales of the Arabian Nights. What do they call it? Arabian Nights: Tales of One Thousand and One Nights. Uh, in a huge, virtually unedited Penguin edition with tons of notes. Wonderful. Oh. Fantastic. I'm glad I have these. Uh, this is, well, those of you, some of you, most of you will know the uh, the famous outtakes from the Arabian Nights, Sinbad and whatnot. Uh, but the real joy of reading it in, 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 in unabridged form is all the stuff that isn't Sinbad, all the stuff that never gets told in, in children's abridgments or in, you know, typical best of type renditions that, uh, submerging yourself in those three big volumes is an amazing feeling. <laughs> Uh, and that is it. That Wow, what an exotic shelf. That is uh, the last shelf of this Penguin Annex bookcase. We went all the way from the bottom to the top, and most of these shelves are now empty as I, as I figure out what I want to do with this bookcase. Obviously, it can't stay the way it is. Uh, but we've gone through it now. <laughs> we've gone through the whole thing. So I'm going to figure out what to do with this bookcase. And then once I've figured that out and moved all sorts of stuff around, we'll continue with the Penguin Wall. Uh, so it might be a day or two, <laughs> especially since it's 200 degrees Fahrenheit here. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll, I'll wrap this up, but I'll see you soon. Thank you, book two.